If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, regardless of what your hard money lender would say, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into funding two different ways. One way is one way you've heard me talk about for years. And another new way is by my very good friend and special guest that I've got here on the show today. I'm not going to introduce him yet because I've got a free online class first that I want to tell you all about. And then I'm going to bring my special guest on. So as I said, if you are brand new to this show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor, I got to tell you, we talk about all things real estate investing, single family houses. We even talk about commercial but you've heard me talk to you over the past few years about myself being the private money authority. So again, as I mentioned a second ago, if you're looking for funding, unlimited funding for those deals that require cash, I've got a free online class that I'm gonna give you right now and you can check it out when we finish the show. Go over to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. That's M-O-N-E-Y podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T. And we'll get you plugged into the funding. Well, as I mentioned a second ago, I've got a very, very special guest here on today's show. And uh, this is the first time I've had him on. He and I are in a high-end mastermind, uh, real estate investing mastermind group. And I've come to know him for about the past year and a half. He's well known, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. He's a very, very successful real estate investor, and he's been training folks for, uh, for quite a while. My good friend, his name is Eddie Speed, and I'll tell you what, I know a lot of very successful real estate investors, but I don't know another real estate investors that really knows how to architect and structure deals like Eddie does. So almost now, for 40 years, listen to this, my friends. Eddie has purchased more than 40,000, that's 40,000 notes, and his note school executive team, listen to this, has bought three and a half billion, that's B as in boy, three and a half billion dollars in notes. So he's an esteemed teacher in all aspects of real estate notes. He's got innovative methods like nobody else I know. And here's one of his many credentials. He's been inaugurated and inducted to the Small Balanced Real Estate Hall of Fame. He speaks at events all across the nation. We've shared the same stage as ourselves. And like myself, Eddie teaches people how to find freedom and flexibility through a widely untapped and extremely profitable area of real estate investment. And that's creative buying and selling notes. However, there's another technique that Eddie has been using for years, but now he's put that technique on steroids. <laughs> that is, he's going to be talking to us here on the show about he leverages people who owns properties who are willing to actually take a note back and seller finance those deals. Before I bring Eddie on, just one more thing. Back in 2003, Eddie founded Note School, which is a real estate coaching program that teaches his students how to buy and sell performing and non-performing notes, as well as other alternative purchasing strategies like seller financing, as I mentioned. And as I say, my friend Eddie has put this strategy on steroids. He's going to pull the curtain back here on the show in just a second and lay it out for us step by step. My good friend, Eddie Speed, welcome to the show. Hey, my friend. How are you? Man, I'm doing fantastic, Eddie. I know we just saw each other a few weeks ago at our mastermind group, and it was great to see you and appreciate so much you taking the time to come here on today's show. Well, it's a it's an honor. And you know, you and I have known of each other and known hundreds of mutual friends forever. And it was Really great year and a half or two years ago when we got to connect and have many lunches and dinners together and spend time and and, and learn more about each other. And and uh, so I'm very honored to be here today. And I am, I can tell you're fired up about it, but I'm fired up about it too. I think what I'm doing is an excellent plan B for real estate investors. Well, I know it is. In fact, Eddie, it was a couple of meetings ago, I heard you explaining 
this technique and strategy that you put on steroids. And uh, in fact, <laughs> you won the belt. You won the you won the prize for the best presentation out of all the presentations. <laughs> and so that's why I wanted to have you come here on the show. But but Eddie, before before we get into this strategy that you're really, really focusing on these days, I'd like for you to tell folks your backstory because a lot of my audience, and in fact, I'm so excited to have you on. I mean, we're having close to 30,000 new downloads and listeners a month come wow. on the show now. And and so um, I'm glad you're on. I get to introduce you to a lot of people now, but tell people your backstory and how you got involved in real estate, you know, back when. Well, I was, uh, I was a very young guy. I was 20 years old. And Martha, my wife, who you've hung out with, her dad was one of the real pioneers of buying seller finance notes. You know, he had sold, he was a real estate investor. He had sold property and created owner financing. And then he learned you could just go out and buy somebody else's note, right, that they had already created. And I was just a kid. I mean, I was 20 years old and I just stumbled into it. Seller financing was really plentiful in 1980 because of high interest rates. And so that was just a, it was a big business opportunity. And I just kind of plunged my way into it. I have subsequently seller financed thousands of properties myself. So I've been on the real estate side as well as, you know, buying other people's notes. And yes, I have bought about over 40,000 seller carried notes. And that's how I stumbled into this idea, right? I mean, this, this, it was just life. I mean, the one thing that I would say about seller financing is it's just hard to meet somebody that's looked at three or 400,000 transactions with the same common thread. And I've looked at three or 400,000 owner finance notes. Right, right. So, um, so you're based out of where? Where's your home? Dallas, Fort Worth. In Fort Worth. Well, you know, that's another thing that we have in common. My wife, Carol Joy, is from Wichita Falls, Texas. And so I know you got a little Texas twang there. Now, so this strategy, you say you came upon this strategy, not came upon it, but you really got to focusing on it because you had already been buying and investing in notes but it just sort of makes sense. I mean, you're buying that from the from the owner of a note. So how does that connect or how does that segue into this strategy you got going on now on focusing on um, buying from people that, you know, would take a note back? Well, Martha and I, my wife, we bought our first property in 1983 with seller financing. I mean, I've been doing it a long time. But in 1983, I couldn't afford 20% interest. And I was self-employed and I wasn't bankable, right? All the reasons that you, you know, and so as a necessity, I just structured the terms way different than a bank would have agreed to it. I didn't have to qualify for a loan. I didn't have to personally guarantee it. I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have to pay bank interest rates. And, and so I've bought ranches, land, commercial houses, all kind of stuff, subdivisions, I bought all kind of stuff on terms where the seller carried terms for me for my career. But really as a sideline business, I've been traditionally a note guy. And then obviously for 20 years, I've had note school. So I'm one night I'm having dinner with a mutual friend of ours, right? Who's a very name brand real estate guy. And I'm just telling him about this last piece of dirt we bought, right? It's a piece of country land up near Wichita Falls. And I'm saying, you know, we bought it and at the closing, whatever we paid down, she released that part of the land and then we didn't have a mortgage on it. And then the rest of it, she carried it zero interest. And the first payment was due three years from now. And I did this and, and I'm just telling a story. And this guy looks back, kind of rears back in his seat and he goes, oh my gosh, Eddie, every real estate and investor in the world needs this as a plan B, particularly when the tightening of the wholesaling thing is coming to fruition. And that was really about a year and a half ago. We've all been seeing this train coming, right? Yeah. He really doesn't realize there's a change in wholesaling. They're in a very unique market or they're just not very active yet because it's happened. Right. Right. And, and I said, of course I know that. I said, yeah, I, I totally realize that every real estate investor ought to know enough creative financing to figure out how to, work a deal because you could pay full retail. You see, when you pay with tomorrow's dollars, particularly like at a low interest rate, and you can put the money way out in the future, you can get the money back in on the house before you ever owe the money to somebody else, right? And you can 
it would it would totally allow you to do all kind of things. So that's exactly how it morphed. And, and I just decided if I was going to do this, that I was going to go be an A player, right? That I, I knew there was a lot of people that were had done it. I mean, you and I've met a lot of people that bought on terms, but I mean, like at a really a deep level, like really what could you do? And, and so I just literally spent about a year kind of waking up every morning thinking what would be every strategy that you could do to offer to a seller to sell you a house and then carry the financing. And that could be done in a range from everything that they owned it free and clear till they owed almost everything the property was worth. In other words, that whole range of, you know, the amount of equity the seller had and how could you structure it? So that's kind of a long story, but that's what that's that was my aha moment. Okay, so let's break it down step by step. So first of all, just not to assume. So how about help us understand what are the and you already alluded to some of them, but what are some of the benefits of us as the real estate investor buying with seller financing? Well, the biggest benefit is, is that if you're a real estate investor, you're probably making about 20 offers to get one buy. Yep. Okay. I, it takes me 15. I'm one out of 15, but I would say on average about one out of 20. Well, and that's what in the mastermind that you and I are in, which you have to do 100 deals a year to even get in it, right? That's the number. That's the common thread number I keep getting. So it seems to be accurate. Yep. And so here's the deal. You're offering to buy a hundred thousand dollar house for 75,000 bucks. Well, sometimes that customer is more focused on the 25 they're not getting than the 75 they are getting. Right. Right. And so this is a way to say, Hey, I could pay you a hundred and just understand. And this is why it takes training, right? It's some of this stuff, like you got to whiteboard it out. You got to lay it out and run the numbers and see it. But I can fully tell somebody with confidence, I can tell you how to make more money out of paying retail than you can paying wholesale if you can pick the terms, right? Right. And right. Then, so, so then identifying what those terms are, uh, you know, the obvious, Jay, are going to be nothing down. Right. Zero interest. Okay. Deferring payments and not having a payment for the first 12 months or six months or whatever. Like those are the obvious things. Well, that's that's a big one right there. I mean, if you can negotiate or when you negotiate a deal, well, well, let me ask you this. Is it realistic sometimes to negotiate a deal where you can get all three, where you can get zero down, zero interest and zero payments deferred for a while? And I've done all those things and I've taught hundreds of students to do those things. But Jay, I'm going to say this to you. Why I had to go take this to a different level is because they're only going to do that 15 or 20% of the time. They'll do it, but they're only going to do it 15 or 20% of the time. Then I had to show people how to structure deals to effectively get the same bargain. If the, if the seller says, no, I want 2% interest or I want 4% interest. And so I teach other kind of workaround strategies to really do that. Here's, here's what I believe. I believe the ultimate terms offer right where the seller is willing the seller of the property carries this financing for you the buyer the ultimate terms offer is a tailored offer once you understand the seller's real hot button and then you just craft backwards into how you make an offer it's what you do jay mm -hmm. i mean if the lady said i don't want to move my couch you know it weighs weighs a ton to hurt my husband's back and if we sell this house, I don't want to move the couch. And guess what you're going to agree to? Moving the couch. You leave that couch right there. We'll, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It's the same thing. And so that's exactly what we try to do is just understand their needs and then craft and craft a scenario accordingly. And, and, and people, and that is why we do it in the framework of note school, right? It's hard to explain all the possibilities in 15 minutes. Sure. I will tell you what I have. This is what I've surmised. There's 50 different terms you can negotiate. Virtually all of them, a bank or a hard money lender or a mortgage company would never agree to, but the seller will agree to it. Right. Right. So let me ask you this, Eddie. 
So using this strategy, so you said, you know, on average, maybe about 15 to 20% of your sellers, right? Of your motivated sellers will be open to this type of negotiation, right? Yep. And, and, you know, I, and I've told my students, I mean, you know, buying with seller financing. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you have a preference between buying with seller financing versus buying uh, subject to the existing note? Well, I have a strategy that I believe is a lot safer than a sub two buy. Yeah. Very familiar with it. I have hundreds of friends that do it, but, it, but there's an element of risk, right? I mean, you're breaking a covenant in the deed of trust, right? Or the mortgage. I mean, it's, it's a clear promise in there that you're not going to do that. And, and I just believe that there's, I have, I have some strategies that I teach that get you the same result, but don't get you the same risk. Right, got you. So when you're marketing to motivated sellers, of course, one thing that I've learned over the past 15 years and that I teach as well is, okay, so I've got these different categories of motivated sellers that are responding to our, you know, different ways that we market to them and the different ways that we find them. Is there any particular group or category of owners of properties that you have found that are more willing and open to the idea of selling to us with seller financing? Well, the obvious is if they if it's free and clear, they can carry the bank, right? And there's all kinds of ways that I show people how to do it, even if it needs repairs. Even if they want some money at closing, there's some there's some ways that we can structure financing and then sell a little note at the closing so that they've got cash at the closing. It's just not the buyer's cash, right? Right. But the other side, you know, I coach guys that are in the mastermind that we're in. Yeah. I coach guys in two or three other high-end masterminds that all pretty much have that same qualification, right? You, you got to do about 100 deals a year to get there. And it's common every weekend or every time that we have a class, whatever weekend that happens to be, um, you know, there's guys in the room that do between 200 and 300 deals. Here's something no wholesaler chases. No wholesaler chases a deal. They owe 85% of fair market value. Right. I can show you how to crush it with that deal. Nice. Now, well, and you know what's really intriguing about what you're talking about is that the majority of the sellers that are out there are up in this category as to where it's been leads that we that real estate investors have been throwing in the trash can. I just did a class the other day. Okay. I got I got several of these guys sitting in the room. Several of you would know, some you may have heard of, right? But all, there, not everybody in the room, right? It, not everybody in the room fits that category. About 25 to 30% of the people that, that come to a class today have, I would say, a very measurable resume. And a third of the people in the room are working on their first deals. Right. Here's the advantage, Jay. What I'm teaching people how to do, the guy that did 200 deals last year doesn't know he knows no more about doing this than the guy that did two deals last year. Nice. Right. But here's the reality. All of these guys are telling me the same thing. If you could show me a strategy of how to close and profit money today and long-term income as well on a deal with tight equity, I'm throwing all those leads in the garbage. And I'm like, I will assure you, I can show you how to do that. Not, with any lack of confidence, I'm certain I can show you how to do it. I love it. I love it. So you mentioned a moment ago that you're working with newbies that have never done a deal. You're working with seasoned real estate investors. So with what you've got going on these days, I, mean, I think you just sort of answered my question. But my question was, what can you do and how can you help seasoned real estate investors? And I think you just sort of touched on it. Well, the seasoned real estate investors have more at stake because their marketing cost is going up. Yeah. Am I right about that? Absolutely. And their conversions are going down. 
Yeah. Conversions, just to be clear to the audience, the con a conversion is how many offers you make to how many people say yes, right? It's just, yep. just, it's just your percentage odds of being successful. And if those numbers are the case, then they, then they need a plan B. And Jay, nothing is going to change what you teach. You teach people how to source private money so that you can pay cash up front and buy a house. Yeah. Powerful technique. And I'm not trying to take anybody away from doing that. I'm simply saying what happens when they're not willing to sell at a discount? Yeah. Switch over then and go do what I'm teaching. Yeah. It, yeah. So if, they're, if they're doing 10 deals a year or 100 deals a year, right? Buying for cash, keep doing it. Just go dig into your trash can and work the leads that you're not working and go close those two with my strategy. Exactly. Well, it's a perfect compliment to what we've got going on today. Well, I mean, with the private money. So you mentioned a few minutes ago, Eddie, that the market's changing. The people that are focusing on wholesaling are the conversions are going down. So what would you say you see going on in the market now? And how is it that the complexion of the wholesalers business out there is changing? What's what's going on in this market? Well, Jay, you've been doing it a long time, like me, right? My, I've not really had a house buying business, but I partnered with a lot of people, house buying businesses, and I've trained many, many hundreds of mega season real estate investors, right? And in my life experience in this business since 1980, there's only been a window of maybe four, maybe five years that this wholesaling thing has been so hot. It used to wholesaling, you just didn't make any money, right? I mean, it, you wholesaled when you had too many houses in inventory right now. Or you wholesale because somebody showed you a deal that wasn't your kind of deal. Or you wholesale it because, you know, somebody wanted a certain area of town and, and they were willing to kind of overpay for it. But this theory that, that real estate investors sort of got themselves in a mindset of, I'm going to go in there and just make this outrageous margin and just kind of name my price. And all these people that are going to buy houses for me are just going to get in line and kind of fight over who's going to buy the house for me. That has not been, that's not been a long theory in the business. And what, what the guys, all the guys that you and I know are telling me is, is that the guys that they're wholesaling to are not letting them make the margins they used to make. Right. That's just, to me, that's just a market condition. Mm -hmm. right? And why are they not letting them will, why are they not allowing them to make the margins they used to make a, a year or so ago? Well, wait, let me, Jay, let me ask you a question. All right. You're buddies with me. You trust me. All that, right? Yeah. Relationship's not a problem. Right. I'm wholesaling houses to you and you're let, you sort of let me name my price. And the reason you did it is because the property was going up in value. And you're like, even if Eddie wants to make a little more than I think he ought to make, I'm willing to let him do it because I'm the one buying the thing going up in value. Right. Now you're still my buddy. You still, we're still friends. But you look at the market and you see it either getting flat or a little bit of a decline. How you feel about it now? We got to cut the margins. <laughs> I mean, is that that's just a market condition? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and you know what you say is, is interesting, Eddie. You know, one thing that came to my mind just a moment ago is regardless of the market, regardless of the whether our exit strategy is wholesaling and and even to some degree regardless of using your strategy you know what i've discovered in the past 15 years is when it comes to locating motivated sellers or i say a motivated seller yes. someone, willing, someone willing to sell their house even with terms like you're talking about what worked maybe a year and a half ago or two years ago may not be working today it's exactly right. On finding people that are, I'm talking off-market houses. I mean, it don't take any brains 
to make an offer or take any brilliant strategies to make an offer on a bank owned property that's in the multiple listing service. I mean, my lands, I may have bought two of those in the past year, right? You know, I mean, with all the competition that's out there, we got to be even more creative and, and be members of mastermind groups to know what is working today to find these properties that are off market. So what is one or two of your favorite strategies or ways that you and your team are using as of late to find these uh, off market properties? Well, once again, the, the thing that I'm doing is I'm taking guys that are just, I'm training guys because I'm a very specialized guy, right? I don't have a marketing campaign trying to buy houses today, but I have 300 students that do. Okay. So all I'm doing is saying, look, just simply go work your wholesaling, work your fix and flip, go borrow your private money, go do everything that you have been currently doing. I'm not trying to derail anything your suggestion. Go look over here in your trash can at the people that said no. And if there's 19 people that said no, there's seven or eight possibilities. I can't fix every deal, but of that, I'll, I'll assure you there's seven or eight possibilities and there's one or two closings in those. Right? Nice, nice. So as, as you said, when we started out the show here, I know there's no way to whiteboard this thing out, but if you could do your best in the simplest terms, tell my audience how they can pay retail for a house and over time make money. All right, you and I have a mutual friend in Jacksonville, Florida. Certain bald-headed guy. Yeah. One of the yeah. biggest wholesalers in Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. He has a deal last week that I coached him on. I mean, like literally last Friday, last Thursday. Yeah. Okay, nice house in Jacksonville. The, the lady paid four seventy five. She's selling it because it's got too nice of a pool area with all this pool decking, and her dog can't go play in the yard. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the truth. She sells. <laughs> she, so, so she calls a realtor, doesn't sell immediately, and she's hung up on not losing it. She was a, a, a an executive, very sophisticated lady, right? She just does not want to lose her price. Yeah, she's moved out, moved to another house. She says, I'll sell it with 100% financing. I want 3% interest. I'll do a 30 year payout and I'll put a 10 year balloon on it. So he, he calls me and he says, will that work? And I said, yeah. I said, because you can resell it on a wrap note. Yeah. On a wrap note. Can you, can you sell it for slightly more than not, not even exceeding retail, just on the high end of retail. He says, yeah, yeah maybe 25000 more. I'm paying four seventy five. dollars I sell it for five hundred. I said, there's a penalty box buyer out there. And what I mean by that is somebody that's self-employed with good credit, that's not bankable, or they're, a, they're a, an ITIN buyer, right? They live here legally, but they're not an American citizen. There's a somebody like that that would jump out of an airplane to have that house. Right. And I said, all you turn around and do is you just give them slightly above bank rates. I said, give them six, six and a half percent interest. Go get, go sell it for 50,000 down. You make 50,000 a day and he makes a cash flow of like 600 bucks a month for 10 years. And then the, 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 you put, you match the balloon that you put on the deal. I said, oh, by the way, instead of paying her 3% interest, pay her one and a half percent and then raise it up to 4%. And I, and, it, and I did the math and I showed him we could make an extra 25,000 bucks. I love it. I love it. Well, as you mentioned, Eddie, I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the step-by-step -step techniques and, uh, of, of employing what you've got going on, as we said, it's going to take more than 20 minutes or so. So how often are you doing your live classes? I know I've got some of my audience that would really love to, to dig you know, into this and to really learn step-by-step -step how you're doing it. How often are you doing your classes? We do about 20 three-day classes a year. So the, the typical routine is we'll be anywhere from Portland to New Orleans to St. Louis. I just left Raleigh. 
and we do them. So they're kind of across the country. And they're about every two or three weeks. So they're not every weekend, but you can certainly find a date, right? And find a location that fits you. And don't wait for a year for me to come to your hometown living room kind of thing, right? It's a right. it much opportunity to do that. And, and we're just trying to get to everybody, right? Yeah. And there are about 20 of them a year. And, and we really just, it gives us three days to show you the strategy, show you case studies, show you how it worked, show if the numbers were different, how it could have worked, and then talk about the most important thing. Jay, and that is, what do you say to these people? What is talk off? Yeah, I mean, that's so important. So important to have, you know, the the verbiage, the scripting, the framing, how you approach the people, because, you know, you can have the offer, but unless once you learn how to present that offer, then there's no deal. No doubt about it. So folks, I know there's a number of you that would love to learn what Eddie's got going on. We've put a special website together, a special URL We're going to go ahead and put it up here right on the screen right now. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash note, N-O-T-E. And we're going to have that website uh, in the show notes as well. Eddie, um, my lands, I can't believe we're already out of time, but uh, parting comments for our audience before we uh, say see you later. I tell you, the the guy that has the most alternatives buying property is the guy that's probably has the best chance of being the most successful. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, you know, like I've learned in marketing, when it comes to uh, looking for motivated sellers, you know, more often than not, the more ways you can give people to the respond, the more responses you get. And as you just said, Eddie, the more ways you've got to offer a seller the way to put a deal together, the more deals that you're going to do. So once again, folks, Go on over to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash note, N-O-T-E, and you'll get plugged in directly with Eddie Speed, my good friend and mentor himself. Eddie, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join me here on the show today. Thank you, Jay. See you guys. All right. Glad to have you. Thanks for joining in, folks. Look forward to seeing you on the next show. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority. Wishing you all the best, and here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Bye for now.